So, Diablo 4 is coming out, and I'm not going to play the beta. And by that I mean I'm not going to play the beta, like a skitter alcoholic is not heading to the liquor store with the $20 bill you just gave him because, well, that's just the way these games work. Am I excited for the release of Diablo 4? Yes. Will I play it? Sort of. At least, I don't think I will at any link. Length. And this has nothing to do with Diablo 4. So if you were expecting in-depth insights into Diablo 4 or its systems, click off this video. My critique is on a much deeper level and frankly, for someone that loved the genre to death as a kid, sort of painful. I think ARPGs in 2023 are just no longer a viable genre of gaming. They will continue on, but they will be sort of cringe and overly monetized and grindy. This is in my mind just inevitable, despite how much I might love the genre. But to explain, I really think we need to go back to the start of ARPGs. I was a wee lad living in the highlands of Scotland, though you may not suspect it due to the accent. When I first got my hands on a demo disc, my parents would not have approved of. I don't remember how I got it, but I suspect it was PC Gamer. But nonetheless, somehow, I got my hands on a demo copy of Diablo 2. The game clearly had Satan on the cover, and that meant it was certainly and most definitely cool. And it was. I booted it up and was greeted to a grim world. I'd played Boulder's Gate, I'd played Fallout, but this was way darker. This felt depressing in a way that those two hadn't. This felt evil. The highland winds blew around our small house, and the sun there sets around 3 p.m. in the winter, and as I sat there at my computer desk, I realized something. Diablo 2 scared me. It felt dark. It felt evil. It definitely did not feel like the skillless, flashy loot fest that was its little demented brother, Diablo 3. But that's a story for another time. What I'm trying to get at here is, back in the 1990s to early 2000s, ARPGs were cool, especially the ones that had demons and Satan in them. Say by that I mean Diablo. Probably more than, I don't know. Anyways, it turned out that I couldn't afford or find or get parental approval for buying Diablo 2 after playing the demo. I can't quite remember which one. But I quickly found in a budget CD stand a few months later a copy of Diablo 1. If you're as old as me, you'll remember those budget CD stands. Oh, they were good times. This was also a dramatic mistake, though. It turned out that Diablo 1, while mechanically less sophisticated than Diablo 2, was even scarier, in my opinion. Less abilities, less narrative, more darkness, and more blood. Safe to say, I did not play the game until the end. ARPGs used to be one of the most inspirational and engaging forms of computer games. A good ARPG had the clickability and violence we'd find in early FPSs like Doom and Quake, with the atmosphere of a good Dungeons and Dragons game led by an amazing DM. Through its inspirational and atmospheric art and world, 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 world design. This was, was an amazing mix of gameplay elements for the time, and it blew my mind and, and many others. ARPGs in the world before icy veins, min-max builds, and crudely mechanical damage scaling were still RPGs. There's st still a world out there to explore, loot to be looted, and unknown difficulties that would be faced. Fast forward to 2023, and... I swear my partner, who's good at Excel spreadsheets, would be better at these games than me. Because they are Excel spreadsheets. So, being the cynical git that I am, I wanted to ask you, are ARPGs a dying genre? To allow you to answer my question fairly, first we need to define what a dying genre is. Make no mistake, genres of games, film, and literature die, and then they rise like a phoenix when the audience and the financial backing for them are favorable. 
But for this example, let's look at the decline of adventure games in the early 1990s. Adventure games made up a huge part of the industry, with major companies like Sierra and series like Sam and Max and Monkey Island making up a huge part of the gaming landscape at that time. The formula of moon logic, Monty Python jokes, and clicking the absolute crap out of everything hoping to progress the story just got old. People got the internet and didn't need quiz lines to solve puzzles, which was a reasonably large source of income from these games, at least allegedly. Uh, people no longer bought games to spend hours engaging in OCD-like behavior of clicking on all the things. The world changed, and the genre, as it was, then died. It has recovered recently as a form of nostalgia and with certain remasters, but no one really wants to go back to the King's Quest days. I, and I can't because I, I wasn't really born then. I was. But anyways, the world has moved past that. So I ask you, my viewer, is this soon to be, despite the efforts of multi-million dollar, if not billion dollar companies, soon to be the fate of the ARPG? Will Diablo 4 be the slow but inevitable end of the genre. Here I want to give you three reasons why I think this could be the case. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and as 0.5% of my viewers are subscribed, a sub would really help me out. As a struggling voice actor who loves computer games, if you watch this far, please just throw me a sub. It helps keep me motivated to keep doing this. Okay, numero uno knowledge we know far too much for the arpg system to work builds can always be min maxed content creators can literally make spreadsheets optimizing builds explaining the best forms of progression the struggling horror of me back in diablo 2 in 2001 just can't occur i'm simply not stupid enough to put all my points into all the things now, you might think this means we can just live out our power fantasies. But what it means for developers is something else to maintain player retention. It means they need to create an elaborate treadmill because they can assume that their player base, with little exception, will be optimized to near perfect degrees. This optimization in ARPGs has only really one option. I mean, how they can make things more engaging and difficult. Exponential monster damage and, and uh, HP, experience, loot, and resistance increases. It doesn't matter how sophisticated the game or its algorithms are, it's going to be a loot treadmill. And in this way, it has eerie uh, similarities to a more sophisticated version of a mobile game, all with a greater potential for RSI. Reason number two, World of Warcraft. Okay, this is a short point, but let's be clear. We know how Blizzard does progression now. And whatever Diablo 4 launches like, we know what the underlying mathematics of the progression system will be like. They'll be the same as Mythic Progression in World of Warcraft, with all its variations. If you want that, that's okay. But this only feeds into problem number one because we already know what forms of builds, activities, and player behaviors will be viable. They will be broken down, optimized, YouTubed, and grinded until the developers slow the progress with a quote-unquote hotfix. We've seen it all before. Let's not kid ourselves what's going to happen. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me for six expansions. You get the idea. Reason number three. Open world games are empty. The idea that Diablo 4 can escape the other two traditional problems by being open world I think is a complete mistake. Open world games work when the world itself drives the game forward rather than acting as a space between activities. This has been done before. There have been open world games that are ARPGs like Sacred, which is quite an underrated game for those of you old enough to remember it though it had much quirkier mechanics than Diablo 4 is ever likely to have and on much less an ambitious scale. Diablo 4's open world will be what an 
open world always turns out to be in today's world of gaming. A theme park where the line is the distance you need to walk or drive. Okay, let's not get into my views on GTA 5 or Red Dead Redemption 2 here. That's more complicated. Those games are classics, but they're classics that deserve their own video if anyone ever wants it. Bonus reason number four, and this will be one that gets me mean comments in the section below. ARPGs have low skill ceilings. They are very, very low skill games. I know that may offend some people, but if you play a lot of Counter-Strike or Valorant or League of Legends and you also play ARPGs, you've got to know what I'm talking about. Yes, knowledge matters. Yes, in the more complex ARPGs like Path of Exile, a huge amount of knowledge can be required to compete in in-game activities. But this knowledge can be largely acquired by putting in a lot of hours, rather than by innate skill or reaction times or pure intellectual cleverness. These are games that one learns the way one learns a new job. A new job that requires, if you're seeing a pattern here, a knowledge of how to use Excel spreadsheets. So am I right? Could Diablo 4 be the beginning of the end of ARPGs? until some radical change occurs? Or will it find the right mix that keeps it fun without becoming an Excel spreadsheet? Will it overcome the difficulties that new players face in Path of Exile? Will it avoid being too much like Woe's Mythics? I don't know. I won't play the beta the same way an alcoholic won't drink tomorrow. But I'm not hopeful. If you've had a chance to play Diablo already or know way more about me about its current systems answer some of my questions in the comments below it would be appreciated and i'll follow up this video after i don't play the open beta thanks for watching